Hi Water Polo fans, I hope you're well. I'm James and welcome back to the Total Water Polo podcast. We've got a really interesting guest today, actually. He's uh, very thoughtful, he's humble, but he is very straight talking. Um, he's one for the future, really, but I mean, he's, he's definitely making waves at the moment too in the international and club game. It's Primorac and Montenegro international Dusan Makovic. Now, I don't need to remind you, obviously, that you can get 10% off your next order at werewolterpolo.com with our discount code PODCAST10, so I'm not going to. We'll just leave that there. But I will just gently remind you, if you can, wherever you're listening to this podcast, drop us a review, rate us, write to us, honestly. Let us know what we're doing well, what we're not doing well. We really appreciate um, any um, constructive feedback because ultimately we want to make this as enjoyable for you guys as possible and we'll listen and we'll, we'll get we'll get engaging with you and um, anything that you can offer us, anything that we can make the show better, we will do. But anyway, sit back, relax, enjoy the really, really thoughtful words of Dusan Makovic. Welcome, Dusan Matskovic, to the Total Water Pilot podcast. How are you doing? Uh, I'm doing fine. Thanks for having me. No worries. No worries. Um, you've just come back from training. Yeah, that's right. We we just finished. Yeah. Is that with club or is that with Montenegro? Uh, it's with the national team. You're with the national team at the moment. So all the all the club stuff's finished. You're preparing for World Champs and Euros. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Good. And and, and what. You know, maybe for some of the listeners, what um, for a bit of insight, what kind of stuff are you you doing? You know, we're maybe 25, 30 days away from, you know, a month out from the tournament. What kind of stuff is, do the national team work on at this point? To be completely honest, we're doing everything there is in water polo from blocks, uh, shooting, passing, everything there is, literally, literally everything, Good. everything. Good. So you work, you're working all all aspects uh, uh, of, of your game, and are you excited for? We will talk about it a little bit uh, a little bit about it more later on. But are you excited potentially representing your country at two big tournaments this summer? Oh, very much. It's a, it's an opportunity like uh, no other. We have two big championships this this summer, and uh, like I like to say, it's an uh, opportunity more to to win a medal. Yeah. Yeah, we will see. We'll see. And we'll talk about that later. But um, I think it's fair to say that we'll we'll talk about you and we'll talk about Dusan Matkovic. And maybe lots of people don't know so much about you. um, And that's obviously why we have the podcast. Um, Upcoming player, really, really fun player to watch. Um, But let's let's talk about your environment and how you were brought up and how you were brought into the game. You were born in Kotor in Montenegro. Which is, um, by all accounts, a very beautiful place. It's a beautiful town with the, you know, the Venetian forts and some nice churches. Do, you know, do you want to just, you know, pretend like we're on a travel podcast and just set the scene? What that little town's like? Um, Kotor is uh, quite an unusual place, although it is beautiful when you when you come and visit it, of course it's a little bit boring because there's not much going on especially during the 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 winter time and so the only thing you can do is do sports so um but that's not the only reason why i i started uh, playing water polo it's mainly because my father w- w- is uh swimming and water polo coach so i had to go to the pool i didn't like water polo uh, from from the beginning but uh during the time I, I started to like it and here I am. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I can strike that question from my, my notes. Obviously, <laughs> your dad was a coach. That's that's um, that's great. You, you said, you know, it's a bit unusual. There's not a lot going on, but there's a lot of sports going on. What other sports go on in Montenegro? I mean, we are going to talk about uh, Montenegro's relationship with water polo because it's, it's fascinating uh, for, uh, from an outsider's point of view. But... What other things are going on in Montenegro sporting wise? What other sports do they take fairly seriously? Uh, sporting wise, we have very good uh, female handball. 
and uh, a little bit of basketball, but that's that's not very very famous uh, here in Montenegro. But mostly men's water polo and females handball. Those are like uh, two top notch sports we we have here. Well, I mean, the big question with that, and I think lots of people kind of want to know this, and maybe you don't have the answer. Um, um, maybe it's unfair to expect that, but um, why why do you think that is? Why why is Montenegro so good and so committed and so passionate about water polo? What what kind of insight can you give us in into that the relationship between the people and the sport? Well, water polo in Montenegro, uh, similarly like in Hungary, for example. It is a traditional sport, especially uh, on the south of Montenegro, where kids don't play football, basketball, or anything else. They start playing water polo from as long as they can know about themselves. So um, I think that's the main the main reason. And um, but interesting thing is, for example, when you go to like north of Montenegro. Uh, People don't uh, don't follow water polo as much. It's only mainly in the in the in the in the south. Why is that? I really don't know. I mean, um, uh, Montenegro has a population of what six hundred thousand people. So um, you you have to you have to make the best of uh, what you what you have. And uh, I think water polo is something that we we really make out the most from what we had i'm so i'm so glad you've you've actually said that because i think that that puts it perfectly you make the most of, of what you have you have a population of you know six hundred thousand people which for context the town that i live in in south london has three hundred thousand. <laughs> so two of my towns is one of your countries which is which is crazy to think is extraordinary to think about how much montenegro punches above its weight um you only have three really big clubs um you know Hersek Novi, Primorak which obviously you know a lot of, uh, a lot about and Budvanska um and that's a you know small population small pool of players to choose from and yet you're competing so well on the international stage like is is there anything you know you said it was a tradition to play water polo but do you think there's something else you know, maybe in in the water or in the you know deep down in your blood, you know the cells look like water polo balls. Maybe is there something like that? <laughs> well, tradition is uh, the blood thing you 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 mentioned. So I think that's the main reason. You, you have a, a very interesting example here in Montenegro. You have a, like grandfather that played water polo father that played water polo and son who plays water polo and grand grandson that plays water polo so i think it's mostly because of the tradition okay good good and and, and what a tradition and heritage you have and we'll, we'll talk about you now and you know um your playing career uh, with Primorak. um it's it's quite a it, it's it's a big club it's a small club it's got a lot of legacy obviously it's um Definitely put on the map back in 2009 with that Champions League, a quite surprising Champions League win, I, I think it's fair to say. But um, can you explain what the culture is like at, um, at Primorac, uh, how the clubs run, you know, the principles of play and things like this? Well, uh, just like everything in Montenegro, Primorac is a traditional sport. And for uh, everyone that lives in Kotor, Primorac is like uh, club number one. And um, that's that's one thing. The other the other thing is we suffered a lot a uh, few years ago because we didn't have our pool, so we were forced to travel to Budva to train, and um, that slowed down uh, development of the club and of the younger players from from the club. Um, Apart from that, like you said, we won Champions League in 2009, but um, that cost us a lot, especially on the financial financial plan, because even today we have a lot of debt that we're dealing with and that prevents us from, from going forward. 
Yeah. I mean, it's it's remarkable to think that such a small town, you know, as you said, could win the Champions League. Um, you know, you've had some unbelievable players, you know, former Yugoslavian internationals, Serbia, Montenegro internationals, and now obviously Montenegro internationals. You know, the likes of some people might not have heard of the club, but, you know, Gerge Kies played, Adam Steinmetz, Tony oh, Azevedo yeah. spent time there. And of course, you were until recently um, was were coached by Sandra Sukno, which is um, you know is a, is a great great mentor to have. I mean, just on that point, um, you obviously maybe interacted with him a, a fair bit. Um, and what did you learn from from a legend of the sport? Uh, to be honest, I was quite nervous meeting him. Uh, like I watched that man play water polo since I was a kid, literally. And so having him coach me was uh, a bit of nerve wracking experience, to be honest. But that was only uh, at the beginning. And um, as the season went by, all of us started to relax a bit. And uh, it's just an amazing experience, to be honest. Uh, He has uh, a lot of skills that he's taught us. And uh, I'm very, very happy that I have worked with him. Yeah, and and who knows? Maybe, uh, maybe you might work under him again one day with an with <laughs> another club. Class. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? But we'll we'll, we'll stay present for now, and we'll talk about this season put it with uh, Primorac. Um, you missed out on the league uh, title in the Montenegro League very narrowly, but you did win the cup. So, um, how do you assess the season for the club? Uh, this season and then I guess for yourself personally how do you feel you contributed Um, for the club I think this was the most successful season in the past I don't know 10-12 years after all we have won the cup after I think it was 12 years to be precise Uh, of course uh, we are very sad that we didn't win the championship but I think at the time being uh, it was not really possible uh, we had uh, a lot of problems with COVID and with um, with other injuries. So I think Yadran was was at the top of their game uh, at the time. As for uh, my contribution to the to the team, uh, I always say uh, there is a lot of a lot of uh, room to, for improvement. And uh, I think it is very crucial to, to no matter how well you play or how bad you play, to, to be uh, on the ground with both of your feet and to, to, to look what is good and what is bad and to try work on, on both of those things. Yeah, well, well put. And I, I guess on that point, um, as a club and personally, obviously you don't speak on behalf of the club necessarily, what do you think? you did really well this season as a team and what do you think you need to do better at? And the same question, I guess, for you personally, what did you, what did you do well this season? And obviously um, you don't have to be modest about it, just, you know, an honest assessment. And then also where do you think you can improve the most? Well, as for the team, um, we, we had, we have the same problem a few years ago and as well as well now only maybe seven or eight players play the whole game so it is very very exhausting on the physical level so i think that is the um, the biggest success that we had to just endure through everything because we had a lot of games this this season um ha huh. As for the, the, the negative side, I uh, I don't want to say say a lot on, on, on that topic. Uh, I'll leave it for uh, another time. As for myself, um, oh my God. I think the, the worst part was a uh, low percentage of, of shoots like I had in, in one game against Yadran, I don't know, 12 or 16 shoots and only one was was goal so i think that that's the the main thing i had to focus on and to work on yeah i mean you you, you've you've spoken there quite honestly 
Um, but you know, just to pick you up because you seem quite down about it, having <laughs> speaking about it. What, what you know, what, what what do you feel you you did you did really well this season? Um, I will repeat as as for the as for the team success from from before. I think it was very physically demanding uh, this entire season, especially when you when you play the entire game, every single game. So I think that's the greatest success to be on a very good physical level the entire season. Yeah, that's a very uh, very humble answer. I I I, I do rate that. Um. I mean, uh, with Primorac, what what is the aspirations for the club? I mean, you know, vaguely, you know, to just do the best you can. You know, everyone will say that, but what what specifically are the targets for um, for the club? Well, for this season that just finished, we had uh, quite modest uh, modest goals. Uh, first, uh, about the regional league it was to to not go down to the to the lower tier of competition and we have succeeded that we obviously wanted to win the cup because uh, we were we really believed in ourselves and thought that we could do that and so we did that so that's the second goal achieved of course we were not um we didn't like the outcome of of the uh, national championship. Obviously, that's one of the goals that we we didn't achieve because we thought we could win win the championship. And as for the European stage, we wanted to see how far we can go. And uh, I think we played quite well against uh, some of the better teams in in Europe. Yeah, I mean, definitely for sure. You you had quite a tough um, uh, set of fixtures in in the qualification round in split earlier this season. I mean, that seems like ancient history now, sure. but yeah, that that was right at the beginning of the season. And um, I mean, I I think it's fair to say that you said you want to see how far you can go in the Champions League as a club. Um, you know, you've now started making it to the qualification rounds, and you know, looking promising. Um, but you personally, you obviously want to be playing in the Champions League. And do you think realistically that Primorac can offer you this? Realistically, no. As things stand right now, uh, the club is in a lot of problem. I'm very sad to say that, especially financially. Uh, and I think we we won't be able to, to achieve that in uh, some near future. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, I, I do have to follow up on on kind of in English we say the elephant in the room. I don't know if that's a phrase that people use abroad, but I mean, we we have been reporting at Total that it may well seem that you're on your way to Barcelona, um, and I appreciate that you might not want to comment on this, and that's fine. But um, is there anything you can maybe tell us or our listeners about that? Uh, at the present moment, considering that uh, the season for clubs is not yet over, uh, I can't say much on that topic. Good, good. That that's fine. That's fine. But just so the listeners know, he did did smile when he said that. So uh, <laughs> just because uh, they can't see, they can't see. But anyway, that that's fine. That's fine. And obviously, I can see you. You do care a lot about putting more match, and I know that you wouldn't want to ever put them in in a bad situation. So that's fine. Um, we'll talk about national team then. We'll move on, and we'll, we'll we'll talk about the national team. Your involvement in the national team. Um, we'll talk about the Olympics, which is obviously quite a big moment for you personally. But it's always important um, for water polo players uh, if they have an Olympic experience. But first up, can I uh, ask you if you can put into words what it means for you to play for Montenegro and represent your country? Um, it's a small country but with big heart, um, with respect, not amazing at a number of sports. I mean, you said at the beginning, you know, women's ha- um, volleyball, handball. Um, so so your people very much look to the water polo team for t- for inspiration, to bring the good times. I mean, we sport can do that um, for a lot of people, but that's obviously a lot of pressure, a lot of responsibility. So how how do you and the 12 other boys 
um, that tie up the gold and red hats. How do you how do you cope with that that pressure and the honour of playing for your country? Well, playing for the national team is, I think, uh, for every athlete, not just for us, the greatest honour an athlete can get. So um, when the game starts, you don't really think about the pressure and uh, about the crowd that's watching you. You just want to to give uh, your maximum and to be the best version of yourself. And so I think that's that's the the main main thing how we how we cope with uh, with uh, the pressure. Fine, fine. And I mean. You don't feel any pressure, particularly as I mean, you're still young. I mean, with with uh, with all the best intent, you'll be you'll be around in the team for the best part of the next decade at least. So um, you, you don't feel any pressure as a young player. I mean, there's you know Montenegro kind of gone through a bit of a stage of um, you know development um, and a bit of a, of a shift, and you're you're very much involved in that, but no pressure. Huh, well, that's a complicated uh, question. Um, as as much as I would like to not feel pressure about certain things, you obviously do feel feel uh, pressure, and um, hmm, it's it's hard to put it in in words. Like um, you always have that that thing uh, at the back of your head: Will I be here if I don't play well? and those kind of things but i think that's not just for me i think it's for for the the most of the athletes and uh, the only thing we can do is to uh try not to allow that uh, that thoughts to uh, paralyze us and overcome us yeah i mean what what you're talking about there is is basically focus do you do anything in particular before or during a game or do you think in a certain way or in your preparations to stay mentally in the, it, it focused in the moment? Obviously, before the game, we do have a short briefing about uh, the tactics, about the individual things that um, are characteristic to the opposing team. But uh, before the game, I personally don't like to think much because um, I do a lot of overthinking. And that can be quite uh, harmful, har- uh, harmful in in some situations. So I tend to to keep the thinking on uh, the bare minimum. I'm, I mean, just but uh, just just pick up on that just before we continue. Would you say then, in that respect, if you don't overthink things, you're quite an instinctive player when you get in the pool. You do things by instinct. Uh, without, without, you know, obviously you think things through and you use your brain in the game. But would you say you 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 trust your instinct? Well, instinct is instinct is one part of of that. The other thing is hard training. You have uh, gone through a ton of similar situations in your training, so I think that's more like um, more more like an experience from training than just the 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 instinct yeah fine fine um okay well we'll talk about last year then um and we'll talk about before the olympics um particularly and it's fair to say that you as a squad certainly from the outside seemed like you were carrying a lot of momentum going into the olympic games i mean you finished top at the qualification tournament finals in rotterdam which is is not something that should be scoffed at at all. There were some great teams there. Um, you beat Greece, obviously, in the final. That was in February. Um, and then, obviously, you played in Tbilisi, the World League, and you won that as well. Um, you beat USA in the final. Um, and, um, you know, that that's two, two bits of uh, positivity. Um, how much winning... Though both of those competitions, I know qualification, you know, that is not so much winning, but um, did that give the squad a bit of a buzz and a bit of a positive vibe going into Tokyo? Uh, definitely. Coming into the Olympic Games, we really thought like uh, we're going to beat everyone, uh, every every team there is that stands in our way. Uh, 
that obviously didn't turn out to be true. But uh, even today, I think we we really had uh, very very good chances uh, of winning a medal at the Olympics, and I'm quite sad that it didn't come true because, like you said, we had a lot of momentum uh, coming into the into the game. So um, it's quite a disappointing feeling, to be honest. Yeah. Okay. Um. Just just one more thing before we actually talk about the Olympics. Then you said yeah, there was a lot of momentum. Could you feel that with your teammates? Could you were you were you maybe not necessarily talking? Were you sitting there think you know team talks thinking, look, we we've we've won two big tournaments. We've finished top in both of them, being really good teams. Um, you know, and could you feel it, or or do you do you actually think maybe it gave in a weird kind of way a bit of arrogance uh, to your team, or how how would you describe? Um, the feeling before the Olympics? I don't think uh, it uh, gave us arrogance because I think our team, um, even though we had a lot of downsides compared to some other teams that had much more experienced uh, players, I think we had our our strengths that uh, would uh, outcome all those all those opponents. Uh, for example, we 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 beat every single team there was on the Olympic Games while doing training. So uh, it is possible. Uh, I think that in the moment we were not, um, let's say, focused enough on what we are trying to achieve, and that eventually cost us a lot. Okay. Well, look, we'll, we'll talk about we'll talk about uh, the Olympics then, and we'll maybe go. Maybe not game by game because they're not all necessarily relevant. But obviously, you can I can tell in, in the way you're talking, and um, you know it's a very bittersweet um, event for you guys. Obviously, a lot of pride and you know a great um, achievement in itself, but maybe a little bit of um, disappointment. Um, you started off well. You beat the Australians um, fifteen ten, which is which is good. It's fine. Um, that Spain game. Now, I just wanted to speak about that Spain game. Do you think it's, it's obviously impossible to tell? But do you think maybe if you win that game, everything's different? Do you think maybe that loss coming so close against a good team, a rival? Obviously, then you lost to Croatia the game after. You know, do you think they kind of spiraled from there or? Well, I think I actually think that uh, it all went downsides after the game against Serbia, not uh, the game against Spain. Uh, I think that uh, the game against Serbia was the crucial one, where we had the opportunity to to break the losing losing streak and to and to go into the 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 knockout phase. Uh, as prepared as we could. Obviously, we don't like losing, and uh, the loss against Spain obviously is is well in kind kind of uh, disappointing, to be honest. And um, oh, it's it's hard to say from uh, this uh, this time apart. Uh, it's like losing any game, to be honest. Uh, I don't want to sound sound uh, too too arrogant, but uh, it really is like that. But I think the game against Serbia is is the main tipping point uh, at the Olympics. Yeah. No, I no, I I totally understand that, and it's not it's not arrogant at all. Um, let's let's talk about um, let's talk about the quarterfinals then. Um, and quarterfinal games, obviously every game is important, that's a cliche. But quarterfinal games are weirdly very, very important in terms of whole outcomes and how we analyse how well a team does. Because you do well in the quarterfinals, you, you're you basically one step away from a medal and then you're one step away from the title. If you, do, if you lose the quarterfinal, you could be right at the bottom of the barrel, basically. And I think it was sort of that. For you guys, it was on a it was on a uh, a knife edge, and you know it's easy to say, oh, uh, you know they lost one game, and maybe after that it spiraled. But um, you know, do you, 
do you feel do you feel losing that quarter final? Do you, do you feel disappointed in the way that you lost it? Very much, very much. We played against Greece a lot of times times before, and uh, we really we really thought that we could win this game. And I uh, more than any game at the Olympic Games, we were we were hundred and twenty percent in uh, in that moment. And we really, really believed that we could do it. Unfortunately, like you, you saw, it didn't happen, and obviously, it leaves such a bitter taste. And like you said, like you said uh, before, we after that we ended up at the at the eighth place. I mean, it's like we weren't there at all. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, you, you beat Greece in the uh, in in the qualification tournament final and as you said you you really thought that was a as a game you should have won um and do you do you feel that the disappointment of that and i can i can tell it's quite painful for you to to speak about it but do you think the disappointment of that led into the the croatia game the next day or is that not really is that not really a thing at at this level of sport well it oh it is it is it uh after that game we were like what are we even doing here that kind of mentality obviously after losing a game it is difficult to 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 overcome that and to be the best version of yourself the next game uh, we really tried hard to to actually do that but we were unable yeah okay well you you did finish on a on a sort of high um you beat italy in uh in the seventh and eighth playoff, and uh, you won on penalties, which was good. Um, I mean, the disappointment aside from the team, you personally, it was a, it was, a, you know, if you can put it like like this, it was a great honor for you uh, to go, and you were actually the flag bearer at the closing ceremony, which is an unbelievable feat. And um, I know you're quite humble, but that that puts you in a very select group of, of human beings on the planet, um, really. And you're the one of only, I think, maybe 29 or, or 30 or 31 uh, water polo players to ever actually ever done it. So you obviously, the disappointment of the games, but you must be very proud of the ambassadorial role you took on at the closing ceremony. No, I was, I was extremely proud of that moment. I remember now when my coach told me that uh, they had decided to let me carry the flag. My legs just cut off. I, I uh, after after that point, I couldn't remember anything that that happened, and uh, I my only thought was, uh, "Oh my God, is this really happening? I can't believe this is this is actually going to happen." How how was it decided that you would be selected? Out of interest. To be honest, I don't know. And at the time, you have no idea. Uh, I, I no, no, I didn't really care as long as it happens. <laughs> of course, of course, of course. And um, I mean, obviously, a, a a good a good experience in some respects. Um, disappointing experience in another respect. You managed to play with some top top players um, in your national team. Some are still there, some are not. Uh, but on the whole. Are you grateful for the opportunity that you got at Tokyo? Extremely grateful. It is an experience like no other. Just the thought that you're among, I don't know, 11,000, the best athletes in the world is breathtaking. I mean, uh, I, like you, you, you're you sitting, having lunch, and next to you is Novak Djokovic, or I don't know who else was there it's an amazing an, an amazing experience yeah agreed agreed um we'll talk about montenegro then and we'll talk about um this summer i guess and further afield um so the national team's performance obviously i, I don't want to bring up the olympics again because we've just spoken about that but you've historically done quite well in the world league recently obviously won last year and I think in Budapest a few years before, uh, the World Championships have been a little bit hit and miss um, since I think a silver in in Barcelona and the Euros actually. To be fair, um, 
although you did get third in Budapest. Maybe you just like playing in Budapest, which is just <laughs> as well because we're there this summer. Um, what are your expectations as a squad? Maybe you personally, but I mean, as a squad for this summer, you said at the top that actually a medal, um, maybe in both, would would be acceptable. But you know, maybe a little bit um, further out from that, what what are your expectations and what are you hoping for as a team? Well, obviously, like like you said, we we want the medal, but uh, we have to be humble. And to be honest, to to a certain degree, uh, we have lost uh, to our best players from the Olympic Games. And so this is a completely different team than it was at the Olympic Games, even though on paper it's uh, it looks uh, it looks very similar. So I think um, we could use, these two championships to kind of um, uh, finding new roles in in the team for everyone and uh, to to set the set the stage for what uh, is to come in the in the next few years because I think that is the moment when we will be on uh, our best. Um, it's it's quite interesting you say that. You talk about finding new roles. Do Sam, what what do you think your role is in this Montenegrin team? Ooh, I wouldn't like to answer that, to be honest. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, can we just keep that that question? Yeah, yeah, no comment, no comment. Fine, fine, fine. Um, as you've as you've sort of referenced and alluded to, we did see quite a new team in. Podgorica a few weeks ago um, but does it feel like that for you guys you, you said maybe two of the better players are, have gone but you know you can often tell in a squad you know people on the outside say oh these group of players they've never played together you know a lot of them haven't played together before a lot of them don't play for the same club and that's certainly the case at the moment with you guys but um, you know you're all fr- from Montenegro you've probably all come up through the the development teams you've been on tours together does it feel like it's still new playing with each other or actually do you think that's quite overstated from from people on the outside that don't actually know no i really think this is a completely new team and uh, like you said the the biggest downside for us is that we don't play in uh in the same club uh, when you look at a Spain, I don't know, eight of their players play in Barcelona or uh, for Greece, I don't know how many players play for Olympiacos. And that really is a huge, huge advantage. When you don't play with someone for a few months, you you like shift your focus to, to other things. You don't think about, uh, you don't live with him, like we like to say. So I think that's, that's the, the biggest uh, weakness for us uh, I was actually about to say um, I mean maybe you you got a copy of my show notes or something but I was just about to <laughs> add you know how hard is it for you guys bearing in mind you lot are spread across uh, Europe basically I mean I, I did a bit of maths because you know I've no no life and I added up from Podgorica uh, each team how many players they have that play from the same club and actually out of out of the squad of 15 that you guys had you had the highest number of different clubs out of all the teams there um which is which is insane and i was going to ask do you think this does hinder you or, or in a way do you think it gives a little bit of freshness to the team you know you need to play with each other and as you said live live together um but do you think there's any positive for for a lot of the players going elsewhere and learning different things, new things, instead of all being clumped together? Huh. Um, I wouldn't say there, there are a lot of uh, positive sides on that. Um, it is extremely difficult for a coach to, to orchestrate the entire thing when one player is used to doing one thing in his club and the other player is doing something completely different in his club so it is very very difficult to to 
orchestrate all of that and uh, i think like like i said and i'm repeating myself i think it is it is a great great weakness but not not just that um the vast majority of our team doesn't play at the highest level when it comes to club competitions uh as much as i like it here montenegrin league is far from uh the top notch league like uh, so like for example serbia or some 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 other leagues and uh, that is a big problem for us i think okay yeah that's fine okay well just before we go to part two then um tell us tell us a bit about yourself and outside of water polo we've, we've spoken a lot and about very you know philosophical stuff so far already about mentality and stuff how do you escape, if at all, from all of that? I know you said your dad was a coach, so maybe at dinner time every other week, it's quite difficult to avoid talking about water polo. But w- what do you do? What what other interests do you have? What can you tell us about about Dusan Makovic that we don't know? Well, at the moment, I'm mostly focused on my studies. I study software engineering here in Montenegro. So that's the main focus for me apart from water polo i'm just about to graduate so very very happy for for that um apart for from that i really don't have much time to to do other things i like listening to music or watch a film or two and nothing special nothing special what music do you listen to uh this may sound surprising to to some people but i mostly prefer listening to classical music i I, you know i had a feeling you were going to say that you see this (laughs) this is the sort of thing that we find out about players that we just don't know and do, do you think do you think that calms you or does it get you riled up do you listen to music before a game for example some people can do it some people can't do you, do you No, do i don't listen to it uh, before the game because it uh, draws my focus away but uh, after the game i like to relax with a good piece of classical music but also it can it can uh, make my uh, blood boil uh, in in some ways depending on my mood the the composition so it's yeah. um, it's very interesting, yeah. to be honest. Good, good. Well, I mean, it's kind of why we do these podcasts, to hear things like that, you know. Things we didn't know, that Dusan Makovic listens to classical music. And <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, yeah, send me your playlist. Um, anyway, look, we'll, we'll take a bit of a break and we will come back in part two with the questions that the folks out there have sent in. Okay. Welcome back to part two of the Total Water Polo podcast with Dusan Makovic. Dusan, this is the part where we ask the questions that people have sent in on social media. And you know full well, because I know you listen to the show, because you've told me. Um, we start every part two with uh, the same question. It's the Total Seven. It's your ultimate team of players, past and present, people you've played with or against, legends of the game. It can be your best friend or your worst enemy. You've got seven players to choose. Yeah, take it away. Ooh, uh, left side, let's say Sandro Sukno and Denis Varga. Uh, defender Leka Ivovic, obviously. Um, p- 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 the right side. Um, hmm. Vladimir Gojkovic and, um, and uh, Gergelikish and uh, center forward. Mm. Dusko Pietlovic. Wow, it's almost like you've you've thought about that before coming on. Did you think about that before before you arrived? No, 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 I did not. You've just rattled that off. Well, that that's good because most people take hours to to tell me. Uh, to be honest, I, I I kind of said the first names that uh, came into my mind. So <laughs> hang on, have you got a goalkeeper? Oh, uh, hmm. Well, let's see. Hmm. Whew, now you got me. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. 
telling me that you'd prepared before. Oh, nah. God. Uh, I will say Zdravko Radic because he's from Kotor. And uh, I really wish I uh, had worked with him. Okay, yeah. Going local. That's fine. That's fine. Okay, that, that's, that's a pretty good team. And full, full marks for, you know, a speedy rattling off of names. I, I do appreciate that. Okay, well, we'll move on then. And on Instagram, we've got a message from Lapin Yaloka. And they ask, what is your favorite exercise in the water? At training. In the water at training. Yeah. <laughs> you have one or like a certain thing that you focus on that you enjoy doing? Obviously, everyone likes shooting. Not everyone likes doing the endurance swim sets. Um, or maybe that's just me. Uh, <laughs> um... Currently at uh, the national team, I think uh, all of us like swimming the most because it's the least difficult thing uh, here at uh, our training so i'll say that that's a really good place to be in where you all enjoy <laughs> at least, i mean swimming straightforward isn't it it's difficult but it is straightforward so you're going yeah with that. <laughs> there was actually another question from the same person who said who's the most difficult person that you've ever had to defend to defend um i would say nikolajanovic if... okay but okay. mostly because I was quite young when I when I had to defend him. So, uh, but I'll say him. Would you would you do a better job now? Do well, I do believe so. Yeah, yeah, I believe yeah, so. Yeah, yeah, I can <laughs> tell. I can tell the way you answered. Good, good, good. Okay, moving on then. Um, Mislav dot two dot Bakaric asks, "Who is the most hardworking player you've ever played with?" Uh, Alexander Ivovic. Really? Oh yeah, definitely. His work work ethic is like I've never seen before. Mine is really really good, but his is another level. In in what ways? I in mean, in every uh, single way. Uh, from the way he warms up for the training, from the way he does his swimming, from the way he practices uh, tactics, every single aspect of his training is remarkable. Is it is it no surprise that he's considered one of the best players in the world? Then would you say? Oh your yeah, opinion? definitely, definitely. Well, that's um, that's that's interesting. That's interesting. So Ivovic, hope that answers the question. Okay, this is one that I've always wanted to ask a Montenegrin or a Serbian, but I've never, um, I've never really had the guts to. But um, someone's asking now. Ejenorian on Instagram says, "How is the rivalry with Montenegro?" and Serbia, and they've also put in brackets slash Croatia. Now, without going too much into politics, um, do you just want to explain to the listeners, maybe, you know, how in, in whatever way you feel appropriate or from your point of view, what's it like when you play against the Serbians? Is there that extra edge? Is there that kind of bitter rivalry? Or actually, is it not like that at all? Is it, you know, 10 years ago, we were, on the, we were in the same uh, team, and now we just... We're we're fighting for a different um, for a different country in the pool. Well, like you said, it is a bit of a political political question, and I think that uh, mostly um, could be uh, it could be um, uh, how do I say this? Um, you could see that maybe in some older generations. I don't think that younger generations do really care about who they're playing against. I, for me personally, game against Serbia, Croatia, or any other any other team is just like it's the same. It's the same for me. But I do think that uh, that uh, it had uh, an impact of some sort for some of the older generations that are retired now okay okay that's um that's interesting and that's been put in a in a way that i probably don't understand but no i i get i get what you're saying there okay well um cedric underscore sg3 says what is your favorite goal that you've ever scored and why uh, to be honest i don't have a favorite goal i don't like watching my goals 
and uh, most of the time I don't really know how many goals have I scored after a game. So my I don't have any. Um, you say you don't like watching yourself play. Do you analyze? No, yourself? scoring goals, scoring goals. Yeah. I don't like watching score my my own goals. I do watch myself play because I think it is a very very important uh, part of self training. Maybe maybe I'm detecting something different. Maybe I'm just being pernickety. But is there any part that you enjoy watching back? Do you enjoy? Do you perhaps to yourself maybe forget watching? But do you do you enjoy the defensive side of the game more than the attacking side? Would would you say that or is that not? not no, accurate? no, I wouldn't say that. I like both aspects of the game the same. Like you have some good. Uh, I think you say it in English. Like you drive. Is that the way you say it? Yeah, dry yeah, win. Yeah. Uh, uh, there are a lot of aspects of water polo that are very attractive, even both in offense and defense. So I like them both the same. Okay, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. We've got a bit of a uh, a tongue in cheek question here from K Milonovic nine, and he's from Montenegro because I, I know because I can see his Instagram account and. Um, <laughs> He says, how much money would you sell me a cap? One of your caps. Um, he can DM me on, on Instagram and uh, we will figure something out. But uh, the one thing is for sure, I, w- I wouldn't charge for a cap. I mean, that's just Great. ridiculous. Okay, okay well, I'll, I'll give you my address in that case then. And uh, maybe you can, uh, you can give me one. Fine, sure, okay. Sure. Good, good, good. No, I'm just joking. Um, although I would like one. It's not that I don't want one. Um, um, next question. D underscore Igor underscore nine underscore two says, what are you doing for a stronger shot? Now, there's a few questions like this. There's loads. I mean, there, there is quite a few. Um, Mark dot cats uh, writes, what in your workout routine in the weight room do you do to improve your shot there's another one what do you do for fitness what's your diet blah 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 um there's there's lots of there's a lot to get through obviously there but um i guess what you can probably categorize all of that as is you know how how do you improve what's your process to improve and now you're still a young player so you might not necessarily know you know in 10 years time you might look back and think well actually that wasn't the best way this is and so i, I understand it's a and i appreciate it's a difficult question um, but um, what 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 do you feel works for you at the moment to 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 go to training and to to train hard and work? Well, I would like to reflect on that uh, stronger stronger shoot. Uh, I'm right now working on that, and uh, mostly we we tend to shoot with medicine balls and uh, uh, use. Uh, those elastic bands a lot. Um, obviously, there is um, there is a part of the training in the gym where we focus on our arm strength, and those are all aspects that uh, right now I'm working on. But I do like I do like a good uh, gym session. I really enjoy that, and uh, also I do like a good swimming session. But only when we can go home after it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean that. I hope, hopefully, you get to go home after some training <laughs> sessions. I mean, I hope you're not kept in the pool overnight or anything like that. But um, just just start. You know, I'm just scrolling through a lot of them. Um, there, there is one down here from um, Zvonomir Ramic, who asks, "How often do you train?" Now, I, I'm not so much interested in how often you train, but would you maybe share with our listeners? Maybe what a typical week is like for you as a professional water polo player, as a an elite international athlete in in Europe and in in the pro circuit, as it were. What what does a what does a week look like for you? And build up to mm. a game, perhaps on a Saturday. How how would you guys go about training for that? Well, I think this applies to ninety percent of of uh, the clubs and national teams. We have about um, 10 training sessions in the pool a week and uh, at least three gym sessions a week. So it's like uh, 
two pool sessions on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, and one on Wednesdays and Saturdays before the game. Uh, gym sessions are mostly Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday, something like that. But it it changes a lot. Yeah. Um, what kind of stuff do you do closer to match day? Like, um, you know, pre, you know, we, we've had people on that explain, you know, if you've got a game on Saturday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, it would be a lot of swimming and a lot of fitness-based stuff. And then Thursday, Friday would be more of the technical stuff. Is that something you recognize or, or not really? Yeah, yeah, I think it is uh, pretty standard in in the in the sport to have that kind of uh, weekly schedule. Okay, fine. There's one last question here. Now, I did kind of ask it in the previous. I can't even find the uh, the name of it. So, apologies to whoever sent it in. But so- someone asks, uh, you know, what what is your future? Now, I know we obviously spoke earlier, and I d- I don't want you to you know have to say to me again. I'm not talking about it now, but you are you are 22, 23, um, you, 23. Good. Um, always correct me. Um, you've got a long career ahead of you, and whether it's this summer, whether it's the summer after, or it's unlikely, you know, being realistic, you're going to stay at Primorac um, forever, forever. And I, I think that is fair to say, and I think that's honest, and I don't think anyone can be annoyed you are you saying that, but. Where do you think uh, would be a nice destination for you? What kind of leagues interest you? What kind of club? You know, you don't have to say clubs, but maybe just generic, um, maybe countries that you think would maybe interest you. To well, I would like forward. to play, for example, Hungarian league. I think it is very, very strong league. I, one of the most difficult ones uh, in in our sport and. Uh, the reason why I picked it is because it's the most attractive one. What Hungarians can do and what can you learn from them, you can't really much uh, learn from many other other clubs and leagues. So I would uh, most likely pick pick Hungarian league. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what a lot of people do forget sometimes is that if you play in Serbia, or Croatia, or Montenegro, or you know, you, you are basically playing abroad in some ways anyway because of the nature of the regional league. So you do actually, it's what Cosmin Radu said to me. Uh, you, know, I, you know, he played in Italy and then he went and played in, in Croatia and he said, well, they were the only places I needed to play because I was getting a lot of the other stuff. But um, yeah, so so Hungary, um, obviously that's a, that's a, nowhere else. I can't nudge you maybe to say somewhere else. <laughs> Um, I don't know, maybe Italy as well. Okay. But okay. but Hungary the most for yeah, me. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Look, Dusan, you've been absolutely fantastic. You've been very honest. You've been uh, been very good. You've given us a lot of insight. We appreciate your time. And um, best of luck going forward uh, in whatever you choose to do for club and country. And um, I'm sure we'll speak again soon. Thank you very much for inviting me. That was a really, really cool chat, actually. I have to say, you can tell uh, when you speak with Dusan Makovic that he has uh, a lot of time uh, and he's very thoughtful about the things he does, the things he says. You can tell he cares deeply about his club, Primorac, um, about the Montenegro national team. You can tell he's quite hardworking, very humble. He obviously didn't want to tell me, you know, um, about his positives and his good attributes, uh, as all good athletes do. He doesn't focus on that. He focuses on what he can do to improve. Um, he, he might well be off to Barcelona. Um, he obviously had a lot of respect for Primorac and, and didn't say that. So we will ha- obviously have to see. But um, he, is, he is really young talent and he will definitely one day become a superstar. I have absolutely no doubt of that. Anyway, thank you very much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this one. He was obviously very good at English and very clear and very insightful, actually. I, I feel like I learned something from speaking to him. For such a young young athlete, he's got a very mature outlook on the sport. But anyway, as I said, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for tuning in. We'll see you again soon. Take care.